All right. Okay, now it's streaming live on Facebook. Yay. All right. Okay. Hmm. All right, I think we've got everything together that we need. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, people probably people tend to drop in in the first few minutes, so. Okay. All right. And then probably best if you go ahead and mute so we don't, don't get any feedback. Sometimes that happens, which is real frustrating. <laughs> okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this morning. It's the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. Um, many more Sundays than that after the beginning of the pandemic, but we are getting through this, even with all of this smoke and um, the pollution that's in the air, I do want to urge you to stay inside and stay safe. Um, visibility is poor in these conditions anyway. And um, if you have need of something and are not um, able to go out, please do let us know. We can arrange for someone to bring you things if that's, um, if that's a need that you have. Um, we will be looking today in the scriptures at the topic of forgiveness and um, I will say also in my sermon that this is way too big a topic to address in just one sermon or one day, but maybe this is something we can start to break open, particularly in, in our society today. Um, this is a complex subject and has a lot of facets, but I think it's something that is good for us to, to take up and to wrestle with and to think about what it means to forgive. Let's begin as we always do, um, acknowledging the sacred around us, acknowledging God's presence around us and in us. We begin lighting a candle. A reminder of Christ, the light of the world, and our reminder that we are called to be light in the world, to carry Christ's light. And I've got a, a larger pillar candle today um, inside a holder so that we've got something a little more substantial that can be with us through this time. And we begin also with some quiet, some time of settling and uh, centering, coming together as the people of God called by the Spirit We'll begin with the ring of the prayer bells and then conclude silence with the bells again. And we begin as we do each week with our confession and forgiveness, the reminder that even as a broken people, we are renewed and forgiven by God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. 
we pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is Baptized and Set Free. Really beautiful reminder to us of our baptismal gift of freedom in Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We hear now from God in scripture and preaching and song. Our first reading this morning comes to us from the book of Genesis, chapter 50, beginning at verse 15. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, 
I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is a psalm that reminds us of God's faithfulness. And it's Psalm 103. And we'll read verses 1 through 13 responsively. I'll read the regular print and ask that you respond with the bold print. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our iniquities. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. The second reading comes to us from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain. And those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. And those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me 
and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. For the young people that are with us today, I'd like to take a look at our first lesson, the lesson that we heard today from the book of Genesis. And that is about Joseph, right? And maybe you have seen the musical Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Believe it or not, I have never seen that show. I know, right? Amazing. I should, I should look it up online, right? Well, that story that we heard about Joseph, his brothers had been really mean to him, really mean. And they came back to him when, and he, they made him go away. They sold him actually, which is terrible. And then many years later where they were living, there was a drought, which is when there's not enough rain. We've had that happen here and there was no food. And so the brothers went to Egypt where Joseph was now, not, they didn't know he was there and they came to ask for food. And he, Joseph was in the role of giving out food. So the brothers came to him and he recognized them, but they didn't recognize him. And so they came and they went and Joseph kind of played some games with them, which was probably not the nicest thing to do, but eventually he forgave them and he told them who he was. Um, and so in this story today, it's all about forgiveness. Um, and the, uh, our um, bulletin today um, talks about forgiveness. Um, forgiveness is a way of saying, I love you after you've been hurt by another person. The Bible is full of stories about forgiveness because God always forgives. And sometimes if someone has, has hurt you, or maybe they got something and you didn't. So like maybe you get home from, uh, from school when you go to school, not online. Or maybe it's when you have finished your online lessons and you've got some homework. And you say to your, your adult, um, I, I want to watch TV. And your adult says, you need to finish your homework and then you can watch TV. And then you might say, oh, that's not fair. I've been at school all day online. I think I should be able to watch TV. Well, that's not a nice thing to say. Um, and that would be something that we might ask forgiveness for. We would say, I'm sorry, I, I will get my homework done so that I can watch TV. When someone hurts us, if we can forgive them, that helps us to be friends again. And the same way, if we have hurt someone else, if we can go to them and say, I am really sorry I did that. I hope you can forgive me. Then that helps you guys be friends again. And I think that that is the important thing is that we work on being friends. And the big word for that is relationship, right? That we stay in relationship, that we stay friends. So, Keep that in mind as you go through this week and have a good week. Thanks, kids. And we turn now to our gospel lesson, which comes to us from the 18th chapter of Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times. Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents, which is about a hundred million days of work, was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made 
So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. It's about a day's wages. And seizing, well, it's about, it's about a month's wages. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in, his, in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, quite a story. Dear friends, beloved of God, grace to you and peace this day from our loving God through Jesus who shows us how to forgive. Amen. Yes, quite a story. And I will begin by reiterating that no sermon of any reasonable length could comprehensively address the topic of forgiveness. This is the sort of thing that a, a faith community might engage over an extended period of time. Really, it's work that we do on an ongoing basis. And I'm thinking that along with one's own sinfulness, forgiveness is one of those subjects that most of us would rather avoid. Maybe there's someone in your past who was unspeakably hurtful to you and that wound has not healed. Maybe you were done wrong in a business deal. Or maybe you've endured treatment that is now recognized as abusive and you cannot even comprehend the idea of, of forgiveness. All of these are sources of legitimate pain. And I want to make it clear from the beginning that neither I nor, more importantly, scripture tell us that we should put up with anything that harms us. And I think that that self-respect is part of what these lessons get at today in so many ways. The model we see in these lessons is one that is modeled on God's incalculable capacity to forgive us. And I got to wondering, I wonder how many times a day or a week does God forgive me? And if it's possible for one's face to go red when you're by yourself, well, mine sure did. We can't, of course, make the jump immediately to the vastness of God's ability to forgive, right? We don't pass go and go directly to perfect forgiveness. Um, I do think it's a practice. I think it's something that happens in an unfolding fashion, right? Not a one and done event. And I can only imagine what must have given Peter the idea to ask the question that he does of Peter. I suppose you could distill this down to, hey, Jesus, if my brother in the faith is a total jerk seven times, am I supposed to forgive him, forgive him all seven times? Seriously, Jesus? Let's unpack that question a little bit. As a species, we humans are really good at keeping score. By that, I mean kind of a, a cosmic score, a running count of who's ahead in just about any capacity. So maybe Peter is thinking about the guy he used to sell fish to. Maybe the guy shortchanged him once or twice. And when Peter brought it up, the guy just laughed it, at, laughed it off. So Peter's question is on what could be considered a 
petty level, maybe an important level. But Jesus' answer breaks down all those walls. Jesus urges him to get to the place where the count doesn't count, where instead of keeping score, we are keeping community. These are basic aspects of what it means to do life together, to function as one in community. These aspects of forgiveness and love. The idea of forgiveness is so important in Matthew's gospel that it's included in the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus says, so when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. That's where the passing of the peace comes from, right? Before we bring our offering, we pass the peace of Christ one to another. It's a symbol of being reconciled in Christ, right? And I've had a mentor pastor say to me that um, as a pastor, when she's leading worship and she gets to this point, she tries to think of someone that she's having some struggles with, either on her own or, you know, in relationship, and she'll make it a point to go to that person because she's pushing herself to that place of reconciliation. And I think it's also interesting that Jesus' language around this is assuming that we have wronged someone, and so we make the first move. And of course, we still find forgiveness so hard. What is forgiveness, anyway? Some descriptions I've heard include um, releasing a sin against you, erasure, something that falls outside measurement in God's realm, something that's located in daily life as well as in larger events, and an action that moves us away from scorekeeping. What is forgiveness from the heart, though? I submit that it's not forgetting it is future-oriented, not dwelling on the past. It is, at its deepest place, a process toward restoring relationship. I think it's important to consider this idea of restoring relationship, which, of course, is another cornerstone of community. Relationship, community, these are things that require more than one person invested in doing the work to actually function, right? So if the person you might forgive has no interest in doing that work of restoring to community, then that is where the brokenness is, sadly. Our world is full of this. But God does not intend for you to take the responsibility for that brokenness. One thing I also think forgiveness is, is releasing the control someone else's actions have on your heart and your soul. And maybe you've had a situation where this is what you'd like to do, right, is release that control and your thought is, okay, I need to work on that. Well, that's that process, that practice of allowing release to evolve in whatever situation is hurting. Not a one and done. Sometimes that release is related to another person's actions. And sometimes that release is related to reordering your priorities. As they say in the military, what hill are you willing to die on? And I think this lesson about Joseph forgiving his brothers it seems like an obvious choice to pair with this gospel, but it's important to remember his brothers did not recognize him, but Joseph recognized them. He didn't tell them who he was right away. He kind of messed around with them a little bit before he revealed his identity. But eventually his heart is so moved that he does reveal his identity. He's decided that 
this particular payback that he's engaged in, that's not the hill he wants to die on. It's not worth it. He would rather be reconciled. And an important note, when Joseph says God intended it for good, we need to know that the Hebrew word translated here as intended means a lot of things. But what it doesn't mean is that God made this bad thing happen so that God could look good later by making a good thing happen. That's not the, the way that that word really translates. Rather, what it's saying is that God can work even through human wrong to render good in the world. God doesn't set up the bad. God redeems it. The things that we claim as important can get in the way of our being able to forgive or seek reconciliation or restoration of relationship. Paul points this out in our Romans text. When we get all huffy over somebody's food choices or the holidays they observe or the cultural practices they enjoy, we are being ridiculously judgmental. You may recall the seasonal outrage over the color or message of a Starbucks coffee cup between Thanksgiving and Epiphany. People lose their minds because a paper coffee cup says happy holidays or is simply red in color with no words and they moan that Christ has been removed from Christmas. And I would be happy to go on record as saying that it's that kind of behavior that separates Christ from Christmas, not the appearance of a paper coffee cup. This is Paul's point, as well as the point of the story of Joseph, and it's Jesus' point too. It's not the piddly little details, but it's how you live your life as a disciple of Christ that is the most salient witness to the love of God in Christ. What does living faithfully together as followers of Jesus look like? That has been the focus of our lessons these past several weeks. And I'm struck how virtually every time I ask that question of the text, the same answer crops up in my mind. Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with God. It's another way of saying, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, do we forgive everything without question? No. That would be what Dietrich Bonhoeffer termed cheap grace, which is forgiveness without repentance. Forgiveness without repentance is not restoration of relationship. Costly grace demands that repentance so that the relationship can be restored. It's always a relationship-based dynamic because the character of the peaceable realm of God is right relationship. All that we do, all that we say, all that we are is meant to contribute to the existence of right relationship with each other. I don't need to remind you how much this is missing in our world. But as followers of Jesus, sitting in this time of pandemic and wildfires and unrest, let us consider these thoughts. What is forgiveness? Where is it needed? How can I help? Because in the final analysis, the answers are part of that road to right relationship. And that is the essence of God. May God lead us to discover how God is calling us to this work and to that road. Amen. Our song of the day today is Forgive Our Sins As We Forgive. 
and I have set it to the hymn tune 24th, which we will, you'll recognize that as soon as I start playing it. Um, much more familiar hymn tune, um, but uh, beautiful words. Um, forgive our sins as we forgive you taught us, Lord, to pray. Um, we'll sing all four verses here and um, enjoy those. <clears throat> Be reminded of God's forgiving grace. Let us join our hearts together in words of prayer in these times of great need. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies and Sunday schools, confirmation classes, and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation. Where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who hunger and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. 
still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring healing and hope to all who are in, in sickness, in suffering, in any pain this day. We lift those to you today who are on our prayer list, and we lift those to you either aloud or in the silence of our hearts who need your healing touch. For Roger Lembrick, for Dave Hansen, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for those who have showed us faithfulness, for the knees that taught us how to bow to you, and the tongues that taught us to praise you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, who alone created the beauty and the bounty of our land, who cares for and loves all, from the workers in the field to the owners of the field, be with your people here in the Western United States now in the midst of fires. Bring an end to the loss of lives and the loss of homes. Bring aid to the firefighters who by serving others serve you. Give them courage and strength to persevere, to find the ability in their bodies and souls to keep working for another day or hour or minute. Ease the winds that spread the flames and disperse the smoke that covers the sky. Bring hope to the displaced and the homeless. Keep alive inside their minds and hearts memories, the physical traces of which may be lost. Remind us that you are the promise of a new tomorrow. Bring rest and peace to those who have been lost and let their souls find eternal life with you. Be a comfort and relief to the grieving. As cities are rebuilt, may no one be left behind. May all be remembered as you remember all. May our hearts never turn away from you or from each other in our time of need. May we see you in the faces of those in need. May we see your work in the hands of all those who reach out to help and in the green signs of life that will soon return by your hand to our land. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always and be shown in the work of our hands. Please share that peace with one another and also bring your elements of bread and wine or other juice to the table so that we may share in the meal. And uh, I'm going to close here. <laughs> during the offering time today, during our, our preparation of the table time, I want to share with you a song by a friend and colleague of mine. Um, this is Jonathan Rudman, who is a uh, seminary student at Luther and is also a musician and composer that I've worked with many times. This song is called Forgiveness Waltz, and some of the lyrics to this are just really beautiful. Um, it's like a dance, it's like a wheel, less like math, less like a deal, more like a heartbreak beginning to heal. We can start over we know forgiveness. 
and I'll post these lyrics to the Facebook page after worship, but um, wanted you to enjoy his music this morning. <laughs> Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Holy God, our bread of life, our table and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread he blessed it and broke it and gave it to them to eat, saying, 
This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. And we pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet table where Christ gives himself as food and drink. This is the body of Christ, which is given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from each place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A few announcements before we bless and send into the week. Um, if you were able to pick up the e-announcements this week, they were loaded with good things, right? I just want to pull up a few of those here. Lots and lots of them. Um, one of the... Uh, the things that I want to underline um, on the first page of announcements in the side column, there's a link to order the book, Turn My Heart, A Sacred Journey from Brokenness to Healing. Beautiful, beautiful book with um, all kinds of material in it that is um, really helpful in these difficult times. So I wanted to highlight that. And then also um, highlighting um, Neighbors in Need, Still in Need of Jackets. Um, but we can always use donations of things like sleeping bags, tarps, other types of things. Maybe you've got a tent you're not using anymore um, for folks that are, um, that are needing that kind of shelter. Um, Good Spirit in the Gorge has begun partnering, partnering with um, uh, Nchiwana Housing um, that is uh, 
supporting our Native uh, American neighbors with all kinds of different things. Marva Janik was out there before the smoke came in this week um, at some of the Inlu sites helping out. And so we will be letting you know in the future how we can continue to support this new partnership, which is really exciting. Um, reminder of signups for communion and prayer on the road. Um, I can come out this afternoon if you want. Just um, uh, call the office or shoot me an email at office.shepherdofthehills at gmail.com. Um, if you'd like also on Thursday, I will be doing that as well in the afternoon. There is a sign up for that. And if you'd like to read during worship and are comfortable signing on to Zoom to do that, I would love to have you read with me. Um, there is a new youth center in Stevenson that is looking for volunteers. Um, also, Lutherwood Camp up in Bellingham, which is our nearest um, Washington State Lutheran camp, uh, was not able to do summer camp this summer, of course, because of COVID-19. And so their annual auction will be online. Um, they are looking for items to donate for that auction. Um, maybe uh, a quilt, or if you have um, a cabin you could uh, put up a, a week's rental for or something like that. Maybe you really enjoy making up a, a gift basket of something. Um, maybe a gift card for dinners, anything that you might be interested in contributing to the auction. Um, there's information about that in the e-announcements and um, Lutherwood has information on their website as well, which is camplutherwood.org. Um, we have an opportunity to sign up for some um, uh, discussion around issues of racism. Um, with the 10th Annual Lutheran Studies Conference through PLU out of Tacoma. Um, we've got um, information up on that. Um, and also um, with our new newsletter, we are trying different things and different possibilities. And if you have any feedback, we would love to hear that. Just shoot us an email about, um, uh, is this working for you? Are you getting what you need? Um, is there something missing? We would really like to hear that as we work on um, figuring out the best way to communicate in these times when we cannot gather on Sundays in person, even though, of course, we're gathered like this. Let us then bless and send and sing into this week. Mother in God, parenting God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Our closing song this morning, sending song, is Immortal Invisible. Um, it's a Welsh traditional tune, um, which is where that three-quarter time, that waltz feel comes from. And um, just classic, beautiful lyrics. We'll sing all four verses.
peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us this morning on uh, worship. Um, just a note, I did get your messages about the music being garbled, and I have a feeling that's due to our internet bandwidth. So I will see what I can do about um, editing that for perpetuity. Um, but I will definitely put links up for the lyrics and to watch that video on your own device of Jonathan Rudman's uh, Forgiveness Waltz, because that is just a fantastic song. Um, have a wonderful week, everybody, and um, be at peace and, and uh, stay safe. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you.